percent was the highest we've seen since 1993. That was the assault weapons ban. So if Congress does change the laws, uh, let's say restrictions on bump stocks or background checks, could that actually translate to less gun violence? Our senior politics editor, Andrew Rafferty, is talking with Arthur Reiser, part of a center-right think tank, for more analysis on this. Andrew? Thank you, Chance. I'm joined now by Arthur Reiser. He is the director of criminal justice and civil liberties at the R Street Institute here in Washington, D.C. It's a center-right think tank. That's right. So we're going to talk a little bit about criminal justice and specifically guns. Right. And I'm interested to know this. President Trump had a very close relationship with the NRA throughout his campaign. He did. And how has he taken that to the White House? It's kind of funny, actually. If you look at uh, what the president has said in his rhetoric, it's actually counter to many of the things that the NRA has talked about. He's talked about, you know, civil liberties being second to uh, control. But what he actually has put forth as far as any type of litigation, um, excuse me, any type of legislation, it's all been directly supported by the NRA, almost uh, to the numbers. Yeah. And is there, when we're looking at um, federally, Congress, sure. is there any momentum for any uh, gun legislation, anything with any teeth, to come down the pike no. in the near future? No. 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 I, you might see some regulation at the ATF. The president has ordered the ATF to pass regulation as it related to bump stocks. But most people who know anything about guns, I served 20 years in the Army, it's kind of just this, this, this empty holy grail that won't actually do anything because you can make a bump stock really out of your belt. Uh, so we're not actually going to change anything. And both the Democrats and the Republicans are terrified of anything with the word gun in it. And I don't think you're going to see anything change anytime soon. But there has been some action on the state level. We saw in Florida, they sure. did some stuff after the Parkland shooting earlier this year. Is there any meaningful action taking, by, taking place on that level with governors and state legislators? Sure. Yeah, you have seen some uh, legislation that specifically surrounds bump stocks. One of the things that I, I think that you might find a type of coalition is around red flag uh, statutes. And basically what those do is allow for an emergency intervention by law enforcement when somebody's having some type of breakdown to uh, take their weapons for a limited amount of time. Yeah. And this debate has become pretty contentious, pretty loaded. It always has been, but because of some of the shootings we've seen this year, it certainly has taken a different level. What are some of the misconceptions that you think uh, have gone on the gun debate that maybe draw people a little bit farther away instead of coming to any sort of consensus? Well, I think the first thing is that my people, the center right, yeah. needs to be a little more sympathetic of what's happening. If, if you told me your mother was eaten by a shark, I wouldn't respond by telling you, you know, shark attacks are really rare. That's yeah. a, a yeah. ridiculous and insane way to respond to gun violence in the United States. I also think that we need more research. We actually don't have enough research. There was a study by RAND, and they were able to change the number of how many mass shootings we had in 2015 from 7 to 371 by just changing one tiny little number. Are you talking about uh, uh, fatalities and non-fatalities or talking about only fatalities and including the, the shooter himself? That was a dramatic change in, in how we look at it. Gun violence in the United States actually hasn't risen in any meaningful way. It's actually gone down. And the, the fact really is, is that if you are not a drug dealer, you're not a member of the gang, and you're not in a, uh, a domestic violence type of situation, the chance of you being killed or wounded by a gun is almost nil in the United States. Okay. And then what about what we say things like universal background checks? Sure. Why, why are mental health issues? Why has there been so much uh, trouble getting an action on those fronts as well? Well, first of all, if you look at most of the shootings that we, we look at as, as a way we're, we're, we're a call for action, in essence, most of the, the legislation that's been proposed wouldn't actually fix any of those things. So that's one reason why you're getting some pushback. I think the other thing is it's really hard to actually determine who has a mental health issue. So I think one of the things that the president has actually called for in his rhetoric is for more robust reporting when it comes to mental health. These red flag um, type of uh, laws actually might have some impact, but we need to get past rhetoric. We need to ta actually talk about what works, and the only way we can do that is if we actually have more information. And that's one thing that I'm, I'm really calling upon the center right, is to back away from the idea that we, more information is bad for us. More information is good for us. Yeah, and I'm interested, you know, you, you're from the center right, sure. so you certainly have a certain perspective, but even without more research or more findings, 
Is there anything you would like to see done tomorrow that could presumably prevent gun violence or could in some way curb some of the instances that we've seen in this country of the quote unquote mass shootings? I don't know if I would have an effect tomorrow. One thing that I would have Congress do today is actually put more money into research when it comes to uh, gun violence, especially when it comes to veterans and certain type of populations that are, you know, victims of gun violence. I mean, most gun violence, two thirds are suicides, but the United States doesn't have more suicides than Japan, which has very strict gun control. So what I would uh, like to see happen tomorrow is I would like to sit down and actually have a, a real conversation about what could background check reform look like and could it actually work and make people safer. Okay. Arthur, thank you so much thank for, you for joining me. me. Appreciate it. Chance, we're going to send it back to you. Andrew, thank you so much. Uh, this is obviously a major motivator for many young voters. And just like Andrew just mentioned there, the Parkland shooting, that galvanized.